Hello Allez On est parti, on va faire la petite histoire sur mon cueil. Elle est déjà partiellement lancée. On vient d'arriver dans le... Dans le train, dans le Star Rail. Et il y a une petite personne qui est là, qui nous tient en joue. Du coup, c'est parti. I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you all. Since you already know what you're doing, I'll also have to remind you of its risks. Hey, partner, what's with the hostility? I thought pulling this thing out was just a way of saying hello. For the last time, state your identity and purpose. My name's Boot Hill. And I'm a Galaxy Ranger. A Galaxy Ranger? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well, that's the price you pay for being off grid for too long. The righteous heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. <laughs> What, chatting with someone while holding the gun is considered a hijacking? <laughs> It probably is. Pardon my frankness, but there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status. And none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. <laughs> this is hilarious. The tale that this bunch of fools spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into Gibbons by Dr. Primitive and they're in some valley screwing around on swings. Of course, I know you won't believe me, which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real Nameless. See the bullets in this gun? Nine millimeter, an eternal classic. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. I can't allow myself to be exposed to danger. That's just the way it goes, so you all have to first prove yourselves. Huh? Where are you going? Hmm. Recognize this? <laughs> It's a model fudger. The Jade Abacus of Ally and Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys? Hmm, model fudger? This is the Jade Abacus gifted to the Express by the Xian Zhou Luo Fu's general, Jing Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Shenzhou Alliance's official recognition of the Express. Is that enough? <sighs> Not bad, kiddo. And across these sprawling stars, a gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of Cloud Knights. Now, I reckon that'd be one budging sight to behold. Hmm. Now it's your turn. Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets. But I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is easy as pie. All right then. Feel free to toss any questions my way. Let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. Gut tells you otherwise. Still ain't too late to show me the door. And why would I play along? If I truly am a real Galaxy Ranger, you stand to lose nothing. <laughs> All right then. Tell me, 
What kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> oh, my friend. This question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an organization to begin with. Everyone's on their own faded path along the hunt. With their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so welcome among such so-called universal values. Hmm, this reply does not instill trust, and only makes your predicament more... precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Never bully the weak. Never kill the innocent. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them, the hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You catch my drift? Hmm. Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the Astral Express? I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinacone for a matter. But I don't have an invite. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow the Nameless's identity. Uh, the entire cosmos knows your guests of the family. Uh, aren't the Galaxy Rangers also esteemed guests? Well, you've hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. A son of a nice lady posing as one of us. She's on Pentacone right now. My informant is a memo keeper. She's the same as all memetic organisms, uh, appearing one moment and gone the next. Uh, she scares the fudge out of me. Still, she gave me some vital info. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? Is that the third question? Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Acheron, and according to our informant, she could be an emanator of nihility. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> That's what I said. Ah, don't worry. When I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance, and that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? Then you must know that emanators can also conceal their own identities, which, for many people, it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even, perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. Its appearance was no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Sienjo Alliance under the spotlight and Galaxy Rangers lurking in the shadows. Paths are inevitably concepts created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. To reckon that nihility emanators don't exist, well, maybe we just ain't nihilistic enough. <sighs> so, do you understand now? Your companions are in danger, and it's pretty harrowing. If you don't want to believe me, you'd best send a message to them. I'd advise you to move fast. We don't know what's happening in the dreamscape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true. And that Acheron, who knows what she intends to do.
I don't intend to do anything. That's not up to you. Did you know? People who come to the land of dreams for the first time, they'll subconsciously stop to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. And then they will unanimously raise their heads to gaze at the sky. Be it reality or dream, Staring at the sky is instinctual for humanity. Since the day that the golden hour was completed, it's always been there, watching over every single night of decadence. But now this night sky has been mercilessly severed, died, with the mist of nihility. And this whole event happened within the course of a single slash of a blade. A single slash of a blade isn't really accurate. It was actually two blades, just that the second one was faster. That's not the point. Many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing, I have no choice but to show some of them the door. For the sake of Penicone and the peace. The planet of festivities has no place for you. A puppet of nihility. Those who live in the shadows do not bear the right to tread the illuminated stage. Speaking of living in the shadows, there's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self, at least when speaking to others. Penacone's dream master. That's just another reason that you can't stay. Whether you believe it or not, this is a real me. We are one. Is this the unity that the family espouses? My mortal shell has long since dissipated. The Oak family's 107,336 offspring are now my eyes, ears, and mouths, spreading joy across dreams when required. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven, in my stead. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. I am glad that you're an understanding one. Alas, I'm not asking. If you think you can. Are you threatening me? <laughs> I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Knowing who I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. This scene played out many times before. And usually, when faced with my questions, most people retort, Why can't I? The result has invariably been that they can't. You are confident, but be reminded, the family is forgiving, but not weak. The cords of the harmony extend across worlds. If you do not comply, when the blade is unsheathed, 
for even a hair's breadth. You will never be able to escape the eternal centurion's wrath in all of your lifetime. 137 individuals. That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them were those who once severed my wings, and those who immolated my body. And here I stand again, about to add another mark to the tally. And you will die. I mean, all of you will. <sighs> but that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please bear in mind, you and Penicone are of different worlds. Those born on the far bank cannot seek solace across the river. Leave and never return. The radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright, luring in tricksters, wrongdoers, and criminals. But even the harmony itself will never welcome the self-annihilator of nihility. And even more so, when this self-annihilator heralds the destruction of everything. Your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sin to all. Acheron, a befitting name. Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Panacone has already deviated from the Harmony. Whatever your intentions may be, I foresee only one outcome. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds that have drowned in their shadow. Attention, please. The unusual event that occurred moments ago was due to a technical malfunction at Clock Studios Theme Park. The family has promptly responded to secure the area, and we're happy to report that there have been no injuries. Oh, I swear that was no movie shoot. So many chips fell from the sky, and I even caught one of them. But it vanished in an instant before my very eyes. Excuse me. Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? Hmm? Yeah, what about it? Oh, Miss Robin! Am I seeing things right? <laughs> no need to worry. I apologize for any inconvenience caused to your delightful dream journey. What you just mentioned about the chips really piqued my interest. Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Oh, it was just... Those chips you normally see everywhere, the green ones, they fell from the sky as if it were raining. And then those chips simply disappeared. Uh, it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Miss Robin, you mean those chips were all part of a performance? B but I really... Shh. This technology hasn't been made public yet. It was originally planned to debut at the Charmony Festival, but it seems it's been leaked. Can you help me keep this secret? The raining chips 
We're supposed to be part of my act. Oh, I see. Then it all makes sense now. I'll do anything to help make the Charmony Festival a success. Thank you. As appreciation, I like to give you a token gift. Oh, this button is... Press it at just the right moment in the celebration. There could be an unexpected treat in store for you. All right. It looks like there are other guests who are also confused. I'll have to excuse myself. Please, enjoy the dreamscape. So many people talking about it. This commotion at the theme park definitely made waves. They would protect the guests within the dreamscape, but I witnessed a group of organic life forms making their way to the theme park. And soon after, a rip tore through the sky, and black rain started leaking out of the void. The family needs to provide a reasonable explanation, or I'll take my loved ones and return to reality. I thought the dreamscape was supposed to be a paradise. If it's not, then there's no point staying here. It appears the good sir has seen many great events. It's true that an uninvited guest has unexpectedly entered the dreamscape. However, their target is not the ordinary guests, but the ambassadors of the IPC. The family will certainly ensure that the safety of the guests is of the highest importance. Miss Robin, I know the Bloodhound family has already sealed off the theme park and has control over the situation, but it won't resolve the problem. The family can try their best to protect their reputation, but as a guest, I don't wish to gamble with my life. But as you can see, sir, no innocent bystanders were affected in this incident. The dreamscape is not as perfect as promised, but there's no place safer than dreams under the family's rule. I believe you know this better than I do. If this incident happened in real life, how many people would be able to walk away from it? Hmm. I could stay here, but keep in mind, guests come to Penacone to enjoy the dreamscapes. They do not wish to be entangled in a conflict between the family and the IPC, so... Let's not have any more unnecessary incidents. Of course. With the Charmony Festival about to commence, we will spare no effort in our preparations. Rest assured. To express our apologies, the family has arranged this gift for the guests. Thank you for understanding. to be worried about. There's been a small rehearsal mishap at Clock Studios theme park. Please stay calm. Hey, are you a fool? You don't even recognize Miss Robin? Who do you think you're talking to? Huh? I, I, I'm sorry. I, I've just been transferred to the Bloodhound family and, and I'm still not too used to working on the streets. I, I didn't realize it was you. I, I'm so sorry. Hey, don't sweat it. You guys have a tough job. I know how it is. How's the situation looking? Oh, we've sealed off the theme park. Most guests are used to bizarre phenomena in the dreamscape, and so far, no threats have been detected. We can expect order to be restored soon. Rest assured, Miss Robin will intensify our patrols to ensure that no incidents occur. I trust you guys, but 
Regarding what happened in the theme park, what do you hounds think about it? It's okay. Feel free to speak your mind. Uh, well... Actually, I was there shortly after it happened. Is it true that the IPC's ambassadors came with ill intent? And that galaxy ranger who easily cut through the sky? <sighs> Miss Robin, tell you the truth. Everyone's been talking about it. The myriad factions on Panacone have already been causing unease for everyone. Thank you all for your loyalty towards the family. The planet of festivities has indeed run into some trouble. A representative from the IPC... He's trying to regain ownership of Penacone and is prepared for a hostile takeover. Of course the family did not agree. The result of the failed negotiations... ...is as you see it now. No wonder. So this is the main reason why the IPC staff are banned from entering the dreamscape. Did they apprehend the troublemaker in the end? Don't worry. Mr. Sunday is currently tracking his whereabouts, and he'll have something to show for it soon. However, given the situation, the IPC surely won't let this go easily. Therefore, we are relying on you hounds to maintain the order and stability of the dreamscape. Please be assured, Miss Robin. We take our orders seriously. We won't let those IPC cronies get away with this. Thank you for your hard work. If there are any other members who still feel uneasy, please tell them on my behalf that protecting the dreamscape requires everyone's help. This is a small gift prepared by the Irish family for the guests. There's one for you too. Please, open it at the Charmony Festival for an unexpected surprise. I can't believe I received a gift from Miss Robin. It feels like I'm dreaming. Wait, I... I am in a dream. If trouble comes knocking on our door, we're not afraid to go to war. <laughs> Rest assured, the Dreamscape's peace will be protected by the Bloodhound family. Miss Robin? That's the renowned cosmic superstar, Miss Robin! I didn't expect to meet a fan here. I'm honored. Welcome to Penacony, a world filled with wonderful dreams. I can't believe I'm actually meeting the real Robin! Sh shouldn't you be preparing for the Charmony Festival? Preparation is important. But the ceremony is fundamentally about sharing the Great One's harmony with everyone. If there's a chance to sing with everyone, I will not refuse. Regarding the recent mishap, I understand it negatively impacted some of our guests. As a member of the family, it's only right for me to come forward and offer my apologies to everyone. But, uh, are you sure it was actually a mishap? Everyone saw those chips descending like rain and the red light tearing through the sky. Claiming it was merely special effects seems a bit far-fetched. Plus, I met that generous gentleman. He looked really out of it and kept talking to himself. Is this also part of the performance? Everyone, please do not panic. I believe that the family will give everyone a satisfactory answer in due time. Even if you say so, Miss Robin, it's hard to believe. <sighs> Some people just never listen, do they? It's never ending. It just goes on and on. I'm getting really tired of this. Miss Robin? Still, I suppose I should keep on helping everyone. I am the epitome of joy, kindness, and goodness, after all. Uh... Huh? What was I just doing? And, uh, who might you be, miss? Here, take this, little guest. This gift has been specially prepared for you by the family. Make sure to take good care of it until the opening of the Charmony Festival. 
Then, when the show reaches its climax, press the button together with the others around you. <laughs> you never know. Something very exciting might happen. We're back to where it all began. You entered the golden hour from this place. And it is also from here where you will enter the true Penicone. It is a pleasure to journey alongside you once more. But it's time I laid bare the entire truth before you. As you might have heard, I also go by another name. Stellaron Hunter Sam. I'm fine. Sorry, I hope I haven't scared you. I know you have many questions. Do you remember when we encountered death in that strange dreamscape? When I was caught by that meme? In that instant before it killed me? I saw the reflection of another dreamscape in its ghastly pupils. So, following the clues in the script, I came up with some theories about the meme. That's why I instructed Silverwolf to issue invitations. Drawing everyone to the Dreams Hotel. I intended to call upon death before you arrived. To solve the riddle using more direct means. And then invite you to join. However, contrary to my wishes, I couldn't defy the script. And I, I didn't get a chance to explain it to you. It is how you see now. I was impaled by the bladed wings of death. The heavy pressure of concentrated memoria, my asthma, exploded in my mind as if it was actually reality. But after the momentary numbness subsided, I found that my body was absolutely unscathed. I was still alive. And it was just as I thought. I, I had arrived at a place starkly different from this beautiful dream. Beneath the dreamscape of Penicone lies another, more chaotic, more primal memory zone. Its name? Land of the Exiles. And so, uh, then I returned to the hotel in the dreamscape, hoping to tell you of its existence. Yet I, I, I could not reveal my own identity. So I could only divert your party's attention and lure you away from the battlefield. And after... All my attempts proved futile. It wasn't until not long ago... When a crimson blade of light shattered the high wall of the dream. Causing you all to fall far into the abyssal depths of the dreamscape. That I was able to awaken you and your companions one by one. And, and that's it. That is all that's happened so far. <laughs> I know it's tough to believe all this without reservations. I just want to say, you are very close to the final answer. Just one more thing needs to be done. And then I can prove it to you. Now, let's leave this place. Please close your eyes. Take a deep breath and visualize the dreamscape's outline in your heart. And remember, you must not open your eyes at all times. Three, two, one. Don't be afraid. The one who has come to greet us has arrived.
Never knew you could do this. <clears throat> do you have a driver's license? I do. That is... surprising. Why? Because this is Japella, the city of sins? <laughs> no, it's nothing. I'm just thinking that you haven't slept in 20 system hours. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I'll survive. Same goes for you. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Slow down a bit. Infiltration is over. Feel free to activate Sam anytime you like. There's still some time before the next part of the script unfolds. Let me stay a little longer in this body. Such a long tunnel. <sighs> Didn't feel this long when I set off. In half a system hour, it will lead us to Kafka. And then comes the downfall of the Japella Brotherhood. Is that also part of the script? It's in your script, too. Sorry. I didn't notice. <laughs> Their destiny won't change just because of your selective ignorance. <sighs> I told you before. It's a bad habit. What about you, then? Is this the moment you finally find the... ...death you've been looking for? As always, it's a blank slate. It's not on this planet. Why the sudden inquiry? Because I'm currently in a car with a sleep-deprived driver. I just want to get there in one piece. This car has full self-driving capabilities. I'll just put my hand on the steering wheel. Will that do? <laughs> hey, don't take everything so seriously. Elio would always say there's only one type of destiny. The inescapable type. He can see the future, and we... ...likewise... ...are aware of our predetermined end. Before that moment arrives, we can still choose what we do. But we all have this right, don't we? After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. I hope you find whatever you seek there, be it answers or salvation. Yeah, glad to see you're safe and sound. Close your eyes. This is the answer. Isn't it incredible? The monster that we have always known as death is actually the guardian of the land of the exiles. It abides by a certain rule. Abducting people from their dreams and bringing them here. The question that has been perplexing us, does death really exist in the dreamscape, appears to be a cognitive trap. It was laid by those orchestrating events from the shadows to cover up the truth behind the disappearances and the existence of this fortress known as Dreamflux Reef. Every emergence of that meme is related to the Watchmaker, since Dreamflux Reef is where it brings its captives, 
It's likely that many of our long-standing questions will be answered in this place. The atmosphere here is starkly different from the beautiful dream. There are no regulators here like the family. And they all look like they're mildly dazed. But from the whispers of the residents, they've heard a familiar name. Gallagher. It's that man again. Always in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Though that does save us the trouble of looking for him. Himiko and March have already made a move. Get ready. We're about to set off. The real dreamscape. The land of the exiles. Before we go, should we speak to everyone first? straight down this alley and it'll lead to an elevator it'll take us to the center of the land of the exiles What a huge clocky. Looks like the watchmaker also left his mark on Green. in this fortress is uh, pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. When I first saw it, I was in awe, too. The sky here, it's like a reflection of the Twelve Dreamscapes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Hmm. 
Though both dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard not to speculate on the connection. But there's no point in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Himako and the others first. Take a right turn at the end of this road and you'll reach the Trade District. There are more people there. And perhaps someone knows where she is. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime, I'll try and locate Gallagher. Sure. Let's reconnect later. Letting her go was the right decision. Further observations are needed before we decide whether to trust her. But first, there's someone I need to talk to. Let's go. I'm sure you've already noticed him. He's right over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And right after Miss Acheron severed the beautiful dream. We'd better check, just to be sure. Ian is perfect for me, and perfectly legal for me to stay in. Let's see how you handle a stroke of genius like this.
guest from before. <laughs> we meet again! And a new friend. Uh, uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy, Misha. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. We met in a dream. Oh. And who might this be? Tick tock! Old friend and new friend! Let's high five! Your, uh, memory zone mean? <laughs> no, Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. So this is your home? After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. This... Sleepy... Can you describe what it looks like? Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Looks fierce and has many eyes. But it's actually really well behaved. Gallagher's been taking care of it. Based on the description, that meme is indisputably deaf. A nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from the truth. D death Not in a dream, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive, and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt anyone. I see. Has it brought back any guests recently, say, in the last day or two? We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. I see. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family and specifically asked not to be disturbed. Um, Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for, is it Miss Robin? Just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. If it's not too much trouble. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Um, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Have you seen them? Oh. I haven't, but please, rest assured, Dream Flux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream, but its safety is unmatched. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find your companions, and then we can all go visit Miss Robin together. She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. She won't be leaving anytime soon. So, there should be enough time. All right, then. We'll uh, follow your plan. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penaconi. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we are still none the wiser. Yes, and I believe their relationship with Gallagher may run deep. Why else would they be so clandestine about their discussion? Regardless, we have to find Gallagher. Say, you mentioned before that you saw Clocky that only you could see, right? I can't shake off this strange feeling. Am I really still so young at heart? Forget it. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha.
Everyone, look! From here, you can see the most spectacular view of Dreamflux Reef. Hmm. A black hole? No. An accretion disk formed from consolidated memoria? Was Dreamflux Reef built on such unstable memoria? Oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in memoria dynamics. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. My calculations are finally done. In another ten system hours, the above dream will swallow the dream below. My hypothesis was correct. This place will cease to exist as the dream devours everything. Hmm? Who are you all and why haven't you left yet? This place is about to disappear. I'm Kami. A dreamscape surveyor specializing in memoria dynamics. And this is my life's work that I'm researching. See that huge gaping hole? It was just a narrow rift many years ago. But now, it's grown into a giant hole. The surrounding memoria has been flowing towards the other end of the hole at a constant velocity, slowly but surely. But the scary part is... According to my calculations, the flow rate of Memoria has recently changed, and it's faster than ever before. It's almost... almost as if something is sucking it in from the other side. By constantly improving upon Madame Rosalina's Memoria measurement method, I've finally obtained accurate results. After ten system hours, the Dreamflux Reef will cease to exist! Just like the melting of glaciers, everything will crumble and disintegrate. The dreams on that side of the void will fuse into one. Uh, please don't worry. This sort of thing has happened many times before. Miss Kami isn't a bad person. She's just a bit... lost in her own world. She'll probably realize she's wrong soon enough. <laughs> you don't say. There was a something else that piqued my interest. Who is Madame Rosalina? Oh, do you know her too? Or are you also a fan of Memoria Dynamics? We're very interested in Madame Rosalina's achievements. Uh, could you tell us a little more about them? Why, of course! She's an excellent scholar of Memoria Dynamics and the first person to apply Memoria Rate Measurement Methodology on Interstellar Travelers. Regrettably, due to the presence of the Garden of Recollection, ordinary people don't pay much attention to the nature of Memoria. She departed this world without much fame, leaving only a few thin journals behind. I came to Petaconi to learn more about my idol, and went to great lengths to seek out Dreamflux Reef. 
all because this is her final resting place. Prodigies always meet their demise prematurely. If only Madame Rosalina had more time, she would have discovered a way to reverse the flow of Memoria. I felt it. The source is in the golden hour. There is a certain anomalous presence stirring the currents of the memory zone. I must uncover more concrete proof. I must convince everyone. Does the name Madame Rosalina sound familiar to you? That's right. It seems like she did a great deal of research and calculations in Dreamflux Reef before uh, abruptly passing away. Miss Kaby regularly mentions her. I hear Madame Rosalina passed away during the prison war. <sighs> she could see the Panacone of today. It's people building homes in the memory zone. <laughs> I bet she'd be really happy. Perhaps. Our destination is the commercial district. That's where the largest crowds gather in Dreamflux Reef. We might be able to find the others there. regular comedian he thinks he's dead although when I first fell in I also thought the same dear guest this is not the afterlife this is Dreamflux Reef that's right did you hear that repeat after me dream flux reef you you're talking to someone invisible if I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed my luck and tried sleeping in my dream. Curiosity kills the papussy. Stop asking! You'll alert the monsters! All the dead are right here. All of them! Uh, you're not talking about the memory zone meme, are you? Uh, don't say that name! It's all your fault. Th they're coming! Go Nubby! These still waters of oblivion. Huh? Stand still. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. He passed out. His intense negative emotions attracted the nearby memory zone memes. I see. But why aren't the other people around here scared? Unlike in the sweet dream, people here don't see memory zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, people can easily escape by forcing a wake up call. But we can't just leave this man here. Can we take him somewhere safe? We can ask Jesse for help. I've gotten to know many locals while waiting for you guys. Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. 
I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? These two are my friends. As for the man lying on the ground, uh, he's a scaredy cat who fainted from fright. <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom and Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often happen here? Not really, but they're becoming more frequent now. Guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady march? Her songs can heal mental wounds. A Halovian lady? That must be Robin. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. Huh? Robin? But I thought she... Oh, right! If Firefly is here safe and sound, then it means Robin must be okay too. Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that, let's meet up with Himako. You were with her earlier, right? We met some stowaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana, like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Penacony. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between this place and the sweet dream. Himeko must be gathering information. Let's hurry up and get going. Let's see how you I knew you couldn't hold your liquor. I tried to warn you too.
This is where we split up. She can't be too... So that's how it is. I never imagined we'd gather the remaining details here. <laughs> to borrow Gallagher's catchphrase, what an unpredictable twist of fate. Himeko, here they are! Ah, oh, perfect timing. Now that everyone's here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, who's partly in charge of the Land of the Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. It's a pleasure to meet the Nameless. You know us? I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacone. We would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the Twelve Dreamscapes. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah, the Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream, or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Hmm? Uh, were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Mm hmm? Hmm? On that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. An important guest? Who could it be? This way, please. The roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. No! At this rate, the family will be done for! Done for! She is. <laughs> Everyone sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style, but I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef, talked to everyone I met, and they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. <laughs> It seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, 
I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Pentacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams, because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. It's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance cause quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Pentacony? Ever since I returned to Pentacony, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment, perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it'd just take some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of memory in Asdana. But now it seems the root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. I'm losing my voice is just one of the signs of the sweet dream's collapse. The sweet dream's collapse? That memo keeper mentioned the same thing. So it's real. While I was away from Pentacony, the boundaries of the Twelve Dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Pentacony. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, found my way here. The land of the exiles. Concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream, where Pentacone's past is buried. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable. But the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor... or traitors... abandoned their original principles and... using the name of Harmony... exploited people's weaknesses to turn Pentacony into the planet of festivities. Trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. This is not the strong defending the weak, but rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the Harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an emanator is involved. I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. Regardless, I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? 
Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Look here, brother. A little bird. Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove. But Charmony doves don't live here. So how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. Uh, but where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? But then it won't have the freedom to fly. Right? Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention of the two best interpreters of the Great One? To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do. I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered, and can't sing, it didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds... They should be flying free in the sky. <laughs> That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you? A young scholar. Do you agree with your sister? I think she's right. But if we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. When they fly really high, the friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. Their ancestors were too weak to survive on the ground. So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. So, you mean, birds aren't born to fly, but they find a way to do it through their determination, right? Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because... they've never seen those birds crashing to their death. That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself, because... I... I want it to live, no matter what. 
Well said, kids. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. We will take good care of it. Won't we, brother? <laughs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood, there's one thing I don't quite understand. And what might that be, my son? What if this little Charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky, only to see them crash to the ground and die? Talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. <sighs> huh? <laughs> Need a hand? I'm... I'm still alive? Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands. Lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacony. Any of that catch your interest? I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is... the sense of justice inside of you. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. Huh? What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The names inscribed on it should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and Tiernan. When Penacony was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us Donna, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on this small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. Their names are inscribed here. Then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but... she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, 
but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Pentagoni faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lampmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. Robin. Hi, this is Toka speaking. I promised to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, is it that obvious? The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dream Flux Reef. The deputy of the Watchmaker, and the one who sent out that invitation. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. History fictionologist? So what, everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah, and everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions, and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. The Stellaron? But how is that possible? Penacone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? I wish that were the truth. But if that were the case, I wouldn't have invited all of you. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean with earth to make an island. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a Stellaron. And that's not something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. In Asdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? It all started a long time ago, back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacone from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. 
The Stellaron first entered the Azdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rivals saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacone under the disguise of the Harmony. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice, weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Panacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata, and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. Dormancy. That's its real name. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Penacone to uncover the truth. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. So, oh, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. If you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. done talking so will you tell us where the Stellaron is <laughs> it is the Panacone Grand Theater itself as I suspected it's the embodiment of the family the edifice that first materialized within the sweet dream that's what turned Panacone into its current state as for the person who employed its power it is, in fact, Mr. Gopherwood, the current Dream Master. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. 
confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive. And even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans, and were adopted by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopherwood recognized our potential and brought us to Penicoli. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopherwood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing, no matter who the traitor is or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself. For the paradise in our dreams. Indeed, for the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Panacone's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here who can barely even bark. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors, and there's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Miss Trailblazer? Uh, that line actually makes me a bit nervous. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations. And could make all the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start. And time is against us. We must hasten. Everyone, let's gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Uh-huh. Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? He's the leader of the families of Penacone, and he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him, not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Although, I can't quite put my finger on it. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Huh. I knew it. As I suspected, this chip Aventurine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. Aventurine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. 
If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. The only question mark in all of this is Venturine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Spoken like a true hero. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Lakework. If I'm not mistaken, we've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet, but the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express, and I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. Uh, I don't know much about my life story, but I do have extraordinary skills. <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. As for the last nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy. Something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. Come with me. Now is the time to reveal it. s'arrêter là pour ce soir on fera la deuxième partie demain je vous souhaite une bonne soirée et je vous dis à demain bye bye